Hi everyone, this is Asim, and today I'm back with another video in Android pen testing series. In the last part, we talked about insecure uh, URL validation. In this part, we are going to talk about weak host checks and weak host validation, basically. So we are going to use the same app that we used in the previous part. So this is the web page for that, and you can see that insecure shop app. Dot com. You can download the APK from this GitHub URL. There's this uh, download link here. If you click on this, you can download the APK. So I, I would add the link for this uh, GitHub on the in my uh, description of the video. So in the last part, we covered this insecure validation. Now we are going to cover this weak host validation in this part. So we will be continuing from the same where we left off in the previous. So if you haven't checked that part, make sure you do that. Uh, we'll be using JDX GUI for decompilation of the APK and uh, analyzing the Android manifest.xml. So I talked about in the previous part also that Android manifest.xml is the only like is the only thing that we need to look for uh, these deep link issues because like that's the entry point and that's that's where we would get to know like which of these parts of the app is like that requires our attention like which part of, of the code is something that we need to focus upon. So let me open this. Um, so here in the resources, you can see Android manifest.xml. So in the previous part, we focused on this activity, uh, web view activity. Let me open this one. So we need to just focus on this on create event. And I talked about in the previous part that on create is a life cycle event. There are four or five life cycle events. And one of them is this. So like these are all the settings for the web view after they have all done. Like this is the part which we focus and this part, which basically does the execution of the URL from the payload that we are going to supply. And if there is no payload, it would just finish the activity. If there's a payload, it would open it in the web view. Like in the previous part, we had this up and running. So let me. So the, these are the two things. Let, let me show you once. So this is the one that we're going to focus. So this helps us to know like what kind of scheme and what kind of host is required. Like how do we construct the payload for the deep link? So this is something that we need to focus upon. So I've copied it here. And then we also need to check this part. So in the previous part, we talk, we checked this one. We tried to execute code that was in this. For that, we focused on slash web uh, URI endpoint. This time we're going to focus on ELSIF part and we're going to see how host weak host validation plays a part where attacker can bypass the host validation. So for creating a payload for the deep link, uh, we're going to focus on this part. So let me copy this here once. And then let's go to this and see what is the thing that we are going to have to look for. So last time we looked into this one and it mentioned that the URI dot get path and the string should equal slash web. This time, since we are trying to execute this one, because this has a weak host validation part here. So we are going to focus on slash web view. So let's copy this part as well. And then we will try to uh, like create a payload for this. So the Scheme is insecure shop app. Um, so this is the scheme. Host is com dot insecure shop. So let's paste this one. Strings dot equal URI dot get path. So URI path is this. So let's paste this one as well. So now we have a basic uh, string created, basic payload created. Now let's delve into this code and see what all is required here. So there's this intent that's trying to get the intent. So basically the payload, uh, I've talked about intent and what these are and the different functions in the previous video. So if you are, um, if you are facing some difficulty understanding this one, make sure you check that out first. URI data three intent three dot get data. So it's getting the data. So basically it would get this URL if it's passed to the app. If there's no data, it would just close this. If there's a data, it would try to get the query parameter and the query parameter is again URL here. So let's add a URL here. Now we have a base string constructed and it's, it's somewhat similar to what we saw in the previous part. In the previous part, it was like this. And we had this, uh, payload here. Like it, it, let's say if it was my website, so it would be like this. So let's try this same thing here. 
दिस इज द पेलर लेट मी फर्स्ट ओपन माई एस आर सी पी वाई सो लेट मी ओपन माई मोबाइल फोन इयर सो यू कैन सी दिस एंड लेट्स ट्राई टू एग्जीक्यूट दिस पेलोड इयर सो आई एम आई एम नॉट लुकिंग इन टू आई एम नॉट रिगार्डिंग एनी चेक्स इयर आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू एग्जीक्यूट द सेम पेलोड दैट वॉज इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट एक्सेप्ट द पार्ट दैट हेयर आई हैव यूज वेब व्यू इन स्टेट ऑफ वेब बिकॉज वी आर ट्राइंग टू एग्जीक्यूट दिस कोड इयर one second we are trying to execute this code so let's see whether we are able whether the check stops us or not let me do one thing always on so so this adv command this is something that i talked about in the previous parts as well so make sure you check that out it basically helps us to easily execute the web view on the mobile phone so let's try this one and pay your attention to this screen on this mobile screen so see that there was a blip and then it went off because that was because the like the validation what happened in the validation like stopped the web view from opening this part and if you can see this is the data that was being sent to this one which is the url that we already passed so let's come back to the code and try to figure out what happened actually so uh, yeah so the uh, this this is some till here we already saw that uh, it it went through till here now it, come, it came to this one and it checked the query parameter for it got the query parameter now there is a comparison or there is a host validation on the query parameter here so strings dot ends with so basically i mean the statement itself says that it 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 means that it would be ending with something so let's try googling this uh strings dot kt we can just look for this so i have two things checked here so ends with in java basically checks the string that's ending with something uh like with the user specified substring or not based on this comparison it returns the result in boolean value true if the specific suffix is match or it returns false if the suffix does not match so let's say so it's checking the query parameter for the suffix and the suffix is insecure shop app dot com so basically what happened here in this case was because this uh let me erase this one because the assumption dot in didn't end with insecure shop app dot com so that's why it it like it just stopped the web view so let's say if i add uh, insecure shop app dot com so it should go through like it should get executed and it should open the web view uh, dot insecure shop app dot com are you able to see this let me keep it a bit here So see the web view has opened the web uh, the web page at assumption dot in dot uh, insecure shop app dot com could not be loaded because the name was not resolved which basically is true because there won't be any sub domain with this uh, with this name so that's why it happened so let me do one thing let's try to open docs dot insecure shop app dot com because docs is something that we already saw that was here so it's a docs dot insecure shop app dot com so let's try to open this one here it should get opened here. You can see the uh, the the validation is basically checked. Uh, the, we are able to construct a you valid uh, web view URL that would open the web view with the with the URL that we want. Not not exactly the URL we want, but we know how the how the validation is working. So one step is like one step is done. We have validated our hypothesis that any URL that ends with insecure shop app dot com that basically is the valid URL for this or that that's something that this Code is checking for. So what the attacker could do here, so they 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 could be creative about it. So either they could, uh, like let's say they could own a domain called let's say Asim Shre Insecure Shop App dot com and they could try this one. But I mean for this they would have to buy a domain if they don't have already. What I would do is I would just add a question mark here, which would basically mean that it's a URL parameter, and just try to execute this one. So. we are basically so, so fulfilling all the values all the check values so the url ends with insecure shop app dot com and still we are able to bypass it because we are able to control our we are able to open 
our url here so let me just try this one so see my website has opened and the validation has also been bypassed so yeah i mean that was a weak host validation check and if you go to this doc here you can also read let me close this one you can also read the same thing here since the application implements a weak host validation a malicious application can bypass the host validation by loading arbitrary url owned by attacker that ends with insecure shop app.com in such a case something like attacker shop, attacker insecure shop app.com would stand valid so we found a new way like we found another way to bypass this host validation there could be a lot of other ways also so yeah Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, make sure to check the other videos on the channel. Like this video and share it with your friends. That would really help promote this channel. Yep. Have a nice day. Thank you.